Today's Gospel reading comes from chapter 10 of the Gospel according to St John, beginning at the first verse. Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. The one who enters by the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens the gate for him, and the sheep hear his voice. He calls his sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they know his voice. They will not follow a stranger, but they will run from him because they do not know the voice of a stranger. Jesus used this figure of speech with them. But they did not understand what he was saying to them. So again, Jesus said to them, very truly I tell you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and bandits, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters by me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. Welcome to this week when we remember Jesus, the Good Shepherd. I grew up with cousins who lived on a farm near Tikra in the mid-north of South Australia. Two of them are still farmers today. And I look back on our childhood escapades with great fondness. Just before my 10th birthday, my uncle fixed some wooden blocks onto the pedals of his old old mute so that my cousin and I could drive around the farm. One of us dropping hay from the tray of the ute, while the other one drove. We really taught ourselves to drive, and it felt like an enormous privilege for us to be doing men's work without anyone supervising us. I got to know a bit about sheep during those years. They can be very stubborn. They'll do almost anything for sweet, loosened hay. They're easily frightened by unfamiliar people or noises. They soon got to know me each time I visited. As a mob, they can be very hard to control. Sheep are good mothers, and whenever the lambs were weaned, the night air at the farm was filled with the plaintive sounds of the ewes calling for their lambs, and the little ones crying for food and warmth in their mothers. Sheep have a lot of twins. They smell, especially when they're wet. They like to be comfortable, They'll pile onto each other to catch a bit of shade or huddle together to keep out the cold wind. So when the scriptures talk about God's people being like sheep, the comparison is not usually very flattering. Of course, it's true that the people of the ancient Near East valued sheep a lot more highly than we do today. Flocks were very small by modern Australian standards, perhaps 20 or 30 animals with one or two shepherds. The sheep provided milk and cheese, warm wool for clothing or to sell, and that very rare commodity for special days, high protein meat. The mutual dependence between sheep and shepherds was much more immediate than it is today. And of course, sacrificial lambs had an important place in cultic ritual too. Today, Good Shepherd Sunday, the temptation is always to concentrate on the sheep imagery just as I have done so far. The real significance of today is not with the sheep, but with the shepherd. In these first 10 verses of John's account of the gospel, Jesus calls himself both the shepherd and the gate to the sheep yard, or the sheep fold as it's usually translated. Jesus is the one who nurtures, protects and feeds the sheep. But he's also the gate, the means by which the sheep enter or leave the safety of the sheep yard. Some scholars believe that Middle Eastern shepherds often slept across the entrance to the sheepfold and so played this dual role. But Jesus seems to be using the imagery more powerfully to emphasise that he is both the protector of the sheep and also the means by which the sheep are able to access that protection. As if to make the point more sharply, Jesus talks about thieves and bandits 
three times in these first 10 verses. His reference is pretty clearly to the Pharisees, with whom in the previous chapter, he's had an altercation over the healing of a man born blind. Once again, as is so often the case with Jesus' blind-related healings, the ones who are physically blind are given their sight, but the ones who are sighted remain spiritually blind. So Jesus seems to be saying that these so-called teachers of Israel are thieves and bandits who come to steal and kill and destroy the sheep of God's flock. Jesus said of himself that he is the very antithesis of those thieves and bandits. He comes that the sheep may have life and have it in abundance. And Jesus goes on in the next few verses to describe the difference between the true, the good, the authentic shepherd and those who look after the sheep because they are hired hands, who have no real concern for the real welfare of the sheep. What about the sheep? What is their role in this extended metaphor of the good shepherd? Firstly, they hear his voice. The good shepherd calls them by name. He knows them individually. The sheep follow the good shepherd because they know his voice. Whether they run away from a stranger whose voice they do not know. So the task of the sheep is to know and trust the good shepherd, to hear, to respond to his call and to know his voice. Here in the metaphor of the shepherd and his sheep, we see once again the pattern authentic discipleship being played out. Calling, listening, knowing, trusting. The initiative is always from Jesus, calling us to deeper and fuller discipleship. Our responsiveness grows and deepens as we listen, know and trust. The quietness and discomfort and even the boredom of these long weeks of COVID-19 can be an invitation to attend anew to the one who calls and to grow in our capacity to listen more attentively, to know more clearly and to trust more dearly our one true authentically good shepherd, Jesus Christ. Let me pray the collect for today. God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus the great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant. Make us perfect in every good work to do your will and work in us that which is pleasing in your sight. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.